Welcome to Death, Lies, and Alibis. I'm your host, Christy, and this is the podcast that dives deep into the dark and eerie world of local cold cases. We're in Zanesville, a small, lovely town nestled in the heart of Ohio. It's bustling with tight-knit neighborhoods, friendly faces, and a sense of security that you'd expect from any small town. But beneath the idyllic surface lies a hidden darkness a collection of unanswered questions that have lingered over the years. So grab your headphones, lock your doors, and be prepared to enter a world where the truth has invaded justice. Welcome, folks. Welcome to the podcast. If you're a returning listener, welcome. Glad you're here. And if you're new, welcome. I hope you stick around till the end. Okay, today we're diving into the unsolved murder of a beloved community figure, Darius Ford. Buckle up because this case is as twisted as it is tragic. Let's start by getting to know Darius Markham Ford Sr., known to everyone as just DM. He was born on January 10th, 1958, in a Bel Air, Ohio. That's a village south of us on the Iowa River. DM was a significant influence in local sports and fitness. Now, he wasn't just a name in Zanesville. He was a self-employed Kung Fu instructor and a Taibo teacher, sharing his knowledge across Sainsville, Cambridge, Newark, and Coshocton. And you guys, that's amazing. If you've ever been in a volunteer position or worked as a, in a civic position, get, trying to get somebody to help, even in your neighborhood, in your own town, is almost impossible. It's so hard. But DM worked in our community and three surrounding communities. Amazing. But his influence didn't stop there. He was also deeply involved in the local football scene. Now, he served as an offensive coordinator for the Muskingum Valley Cobras in coaching various youth teams. Did you know that the Muskingum Valley Cobras was a semi-pro team and they gained recognition under his guidance? I didn't even know there was a Muskingum Valley Cobras, but they, I looked it up, did some research, and they were a pretty good semi-pro team. His dedication to teaching and mentoring youth, combined with his fitness for passion, oh my goodness, this made him so well respected, and he was a very beloved figure in the community. Okay, let's picture DM in the middle of a Taibo class. His voice commanding, yet encouraging, motivating students to push their limits. Or let's imagine him on a football field, whistle in hand, guiding these young athletics through drills with a blend of discipline and care. His influence reached so far, and his absence would soon be felt deeply. Dan's neighbor, Norman Nichols, fondly remembers him as someone who always stopped to chat and offer a helping hand. She told the Times Recorder back in a 2001 interview, It feels like I lost one of my own. He was a great neighbor. He was a neighbor that always wanted to help you. There was no rowdiness, no nothing. And his co-worker and team player, Dan Harder, described Ford as the nicest person he'd ever known. Harder said, DM was the nicest person I had ever known. No one I have spoken to who knew him has ever had a bad thing to say about him. When I first heard he was gone, I was like, there is just no way. His brother Terry got the call at practice, and it was just so unreal. It's a tough loss for us all. God took one of the good ones. Diem's murder was not only devastating for his friends and family, but also it touched the whole community and beyond. It was July 11, 2001. The community was shocked by the news that Darius had been brutally murdered. He was shot multiple times with a 23 caliber handgun and it was near a well-known public hunting area in Muskingum County. It was actually Muskingum Township, and I hope I pronounced the road right, Tunis Road, very isolated place. Despite being paralyzed from the waist down by the bullets, Dean managed to crawl about 40 yards. He got to his car before succumbing to his injuries. Now, his determination to survive, even in his last moments, did not speak volumes by his character. So it was a hot summer day, you know, the kind where the air feels heavy and every moment takes extra effort. Let's imagine the scene. It's the quiet, royal setting and suddenly shattered by the sound of gunfire. Diem, despite his severe injuries, 
fought against the odds, trying to reach his car, hoping for a chance to survive. I know it's a haunting image. One that just blasts out the brutality of his murder, but the strength of this man's spirit. His last moments were a testament to his willpower, but they were also a tragic end to a life dedicated to helping others. Unfortunately, in his vital moments, nobody could help him. The investigation into Dean's murder was anything but straightforward. At the scene, authorities found blood and fingerprints and even DNA. And this is interesting. They discovered unknown male DNA. Now, it didn't match the primary suspect, who was Stacy Coffey, who, yes, is one of our, we call it, POI, person of interest. And she happened to have a past romantic relationship with DMs, well, to say the least. Allegedly, this DNA could also belong to Coffey's husband. And he was described by sources, allegedly a jealous, racist man. Now, Coffee's involvement was complicated because she kept constantly changing her statements. And there was the lack of direct physical evidence linking her to a crime. Now, whether her husband was tested remains unclear. We are still researching several aspects. We don't know if they took a lie detector test, things like that, because if you've been with us for a while... You know that Sheriff Lutz has worked with us. He has granted us interviews, but he's told us from the beginning that he will not talk about these cold cases, which that's what we cover because he doesn't want to compromise. And we don't want to compromise him either, but we would love some answers. All right, let's continue. Just days after the murder, now this was on a Tuesday, and it was so tense, July 17th. Now remember, it was 2001. The Skingham County finest, search forward in hand, pulled up at a house on Downard Road, belonging to Stacy Coffey. As a deputy searched the house, Detective Steve Walker was quick to stop any talk of arrest. This didn't mean cuss for anyone at this time. He stated that this search was just a piece of a bigger investigation puzzle. As the search wrapped up, the community was left, once again, with more questions and answers, and the mystery deepened with each passing day, month, and now years. In a significant turn of events, DM's sister accused Coffey straight, called her out votes of wrongful death and racially motivated killing, among other charges, taking her to civil court. And we're going to explore the court hearing in more detail later in our probably upcoming second episode. So, yes, DM was a black man, see, and Coffee is a white woman. And that can still get your butt kicked around here, get you hurt. But not so much. That ignorance isn't around here so much as it was 20 years ago. Okay, so DM was survived by a large family, a large loving family, may I say. I have talked to some of them, and they are so nice. Now, his, he was survived by his wife, his daughter, and he has a son named Darius Jr., and he has numerous siblings and grandchildren, big family. His funeral was held at the Memorial Park Cemetery, where friends and family gathered to mourn, but not only to be sad and mourn, but they wanted to remember his impactful life. The community was not just mourning a beloved teacher and coach, but they were struggling with fear and uncertainty that followed this murder. Head coach Terry James said, He made a big impact on our team, but he was also very active in the community and worked with kids. I mean, how can something like this happen to such a good guy? It's just unbelievable. I dreamed about it all night. This is such a big blow. My heart really goes out to his family. They are a tight-knit group and are having a bad time with it. I just hope that whoever did this, they catch them and put them away. Candlelight vigils were held and tributes just poured in. Now, this just showed how DM had touched so many lives around here. With heavy hearts, the Muskingum Valley Cobras took the field for the second regular season game that weekend, and it was in Charleston, West Virginia. So in a touching tribute, DM Jr. carried the torch for his late father, scoring a touchdown and intercepting a pass to set up another. The emotional 36-6 win was a powerful statement to his father, his father's enduring legacy. That, that makes it feel right there. That makes it feel real for me. Not a TV show, not a music video, not just a podcast episode, but real, real life, real people, and real damn pain. 
One local community member said, Every penny we raise, every event we hold, it's for DM. He gave so much to us, it's our turn to give back, to make sure his legacy isn't forgotten. And folks, it's important to highlight the resilience of DM's family and the communities. They continue to seek justice, attending important meetings and trying to keep Dan's memory alive through various community activities and memorials. Their determination to uncover the truth and find closure, that speaks volume about the impact DM had on their lives. They are nonstop at it. Nothing's going to slow them down. So how does a community or even a family start to heal after such a terrible loss? And As it goes on, the longer it goes on, do you still have hope? Do you still hang on or do you really just kind of lose hope and say, yeah, is that why these stories just kind of lose their shine? Like nobody really talks about them anymore because you just kind of, you lose that hope. I hope not. That's what we're here for. We want to give you guys back the hope. We want to give the community back the hope. Don't lose hope. Please don't lose hope. All right, let's take a break. It's a little bit heavy. We're going to do some self-care here. Go listen to some music. Shake it off. Take a walk. Take the dog out. My dog's looking at me. She wants out. And we will be right back. Okay, we're back. And I hope you came back with us. Let's continue. We are now at the legal battle. So picture this. We're walking into the courthouse. The air is thick with hope and tension. Every creak of those wooden benches echoes the anticipation in the room. The courtroom is serious and imposing. You know, those high ceilings, the large windows, and that judge's bench that just stands real tall up front. The American flag hangs behind the judge, and he or she sets up there ready to oversee these proceedings. The defense and board's attorneys are at the tables in front. Each side are ready for a legal battle. Papers and folders are just scattered across the tables, but this is evidence of an intense preparation on each side. In the gallery, rows of benches are filled with community members, family members of DM. Faces show grief, some determination, there's some anger, but mostly at this time there is hope. The air is heavy with silent prayers for justice. Each person holding on to a memory of DM. They each have a special memory of this man and the impact he had on their lives. As the proceedings unfolded, the mood in the courtroom is really heavy. I can just imagine. Every statement, every piece of evidence is a step closer to uncovering the truth behind their DM's tragic death. The legal proceedings surrounding DM's murder were tangled with confusion because, like we said, Stacey Coffey, the primary suspect, she was initially implicated due to her past relationship with DM, and there is some circumstantial evidence we will be talking about probably in our second episode. However, remember the lack of direct physical evidence connecting her to the crime scene, to the crime, anything, that proved to be a huge, significant hurdle for the prosecution. So that's why they went to civil. They could prove hopefully more in civil court than they could in a criminal court. So this court heard testimonies from various individuals, and this include girlfriend Alana Brown, who provided insights into Dean's personal life and his interactions with Coffee, and especially about a brawl Yes, a scuffle, a fight, when Coppy started attacking DM at the mall. These testimonies painted a picture of a man deeply involved in his community, but also entangled in some complicated personal relationships. Now, all I'm going to say is, DM loved love. He loved to be loved. He loved to give love. He loved to share love. And he especially loved the ladies. But was that the reason he was shot down for love? Love isn't supposed to end in murder. So Coppy's legal team argued for what's called summary judgment. This claims that there was, she claims that there was no sufficient evidence to proceed to trial. While the court did grant partial summary judgment, which they dismissed what they thought was some really severe allegations, the wrongful death, their survivorship claims, they were allowed to move forward. Now that's huge. That is huge. 
So, did DM's family get justice in a civil court? Well, that's coming up, like I keep telling you on our second episode. Please come back and listen. It's this story. It's crazy. Okay, but first, let's do the interview with DM Jr. We are honored and privileged to have an interview with DM Jr. Now, he's the son of the late Darius Ford. DM Jr. has graciously agreed to share his father's story, shed light on his enduring legacy, and talk to us about the impact of this unsolved case on their family and what he thinks it says to the community. DM Jr., thank you so much for being here with us and for your courage in keeping your father's memory alive. So to start out, what are some of the fondest memories of your father from your childhood? Always traveling with him for his sporting events as well as mine. His teaching me everything he knew about sports and martial arts. Our father and son hunting times, but most importantly, what he instilled in me to become a man and the true value of a family. How did your father's dedication to martial arts and sports, how did that influence your own life and values? My father instilled in me and encouraged me in athletics and martial arts. He was my coach throughout my life until his passing. All that he has taught me, I can still use in life. Can you share any significant moments or any achievements in your father's career that stood out to you? Aside from being the best role model to me, my dad's greatest achievement was earning his belts and using what he learned to teach others the master of martial arts. In what ways do you believe your father's murder impacted local martial arts and sports communities? My dad's death totally shattered all those who knew him. It was unbelievable. My father was taken untimely. My father, our coach, our role model, our mentor, is gone. And what has been the most challenging part of dealing with the legal and the investigative process surrounding your father's murder? The most challenging is the lack of anything coming about. I feel there was more that could have been done than there was. How did the initial investigation unfold from your perspective, and what are your thoughts on how it was handled? In my opinion, I don't believe this case was handled correctly, with as well-known as Dad was and with the actual evidence they have. Dan, how has your family coped with the loss of your father, both immediately after the murder and over the years? For myself, coping isn't explainable to just anyone. You have to live it to know it. Have there been any significant developments or leads in the investigation over the years that have given you hope for justice? If only there was just the normal gossip or people saying they want to come forward with information, but then they never come forward. I feel like I will never know who or why. What theories or leads have you personally found most compelling or promising in the investigation? I don't want to speak on this as there are too many rumors and coincidences with another death, but I'll leave it at that. Interesting. I respect that, but now my inquiring mind does want to know. What message would you like to send to the listeners and the community about your father and the ongoing quest for justice? I don't think it was taken as seriously as it should have been, and assumptions were made instead of real investigation into this. It's been 23 years and still nothing. Dad was the most straightforward, kindest man you can meet, but most importantly, he was a human, a human who deserves justice. No one, and I mean no one deserves to have these wonders of what happened to their loved one. It's torture to say the least. It's been 23 years and still nothing. DM Jr., thank you for sharing your father's story with us. Your insights honor his memory, and they help us understand the challenge that your family faces in seeking justice. I mean, really, your courage and honesty does mean a lot. Your father's legacy lives on through you and everyone he inspired. I want to thank you for giving us a glimpse into his life and, and just reminding us of the importance of, of community and perseverance. You know, folks, this remains a haunting reminder to all of us about the fight and the challenges for just seeking justice. So conflicting evidence and the emotional testimonies plus the procedure hurdles have left us a cold case. And as we're all still asking a lot of questions, and we have reached out to both Stacy Coffey and her ex-husband on social media sites and by snail mail. And we're hoping to hear back from them to hear their side of the story. As we wrap up this episode, we find ourselves at a really pivotal moment. 
The story of Darius Ford is not just a tale of tragedy. This is a call for action for every one of us. I mean, listen, Dan was more than just a beloved figure in our community. You know that. He was a symbol of, th- this man showed what dedication, love, and resilience meant. His murder really did leave a void that only can be filled with justice and the truth. Imagine the impact you can make by joining this quest for justice. You don't think you can? You can. You can by sharing this episode with your friends, family, anyone in these communities that I, we spoke of today, the, our current surrounding communities. Download our podcast and share. That's one step closer to finding answers for DMs, family, and our community. We desperately need answers. We've got way too many cool cases out there. It's time. Our thoughts and heartfelt prayers go out to DM's family and friends during this difficult time. Because by bringing attention to this case, it does reopen old wounds, but also reunites the flame of hope. The more people hear DM's story, the better the chances are of uncovering new information. So discuss the case in your communities, both online and offline. Your voice does matter. If you have any information, No matter how small, please reach out to the Muskingum County Sheriff's Office. That number is 740-452-3637. Remember, you are not just a listener. You're just not a Facebook member. You're not just a watcher on our YouTube channel. You are a vital part of this journey toward justice. I mean, really, seriously, do you realize our podcast has reached right now? It's over five thousand downloads every single one of you is making a difference they are here we have over now eight thousand views on a news article about dm's case and we've never had that high before i'm telling you people are hearing about our little town stories here and it's every single one of you is making a difference your support amplifies our collective strength us together is strength proven that and you just proved here lately Muskingum County. In our darkest times, our community can shine a light on the darkness, right? We just did with these tornadoes. I saw firsthand personally how neighbors do help neighbors in this community. Please keep listening and sharing. You are the driving force behind this moon. And let's honor DM's memory by continuing to fight for justice. Okay, now for my famous disclaimer. Y'all know I'm not a professional. I gather public information and I present it to you. I always encourage you to do your own research, come to your own conclusions, and form your own opinions, please. So in the next episode of A Small Town Big Murder, we dive into the civil court proceedings that DM's family pursued against Stacey Coffey and a John Doe. I want you to join us as we unravel the web of this legal battle. We're going to try to shed some light on the evidence that was presented, the courtroom dynamics that unfolded, and yes, there was some. This, this episode promises to provide some insights and a deeper understanding to the pursuit of justice for DM. Please don't miss it. Okay, that's it for this episode of Death, Lies, and Alibis. We hope that by shining a light on these local crimes, we have sparked something within you, our listeners. Because the truth is, solving these cases will take more than just our words. It's going to require the dedication and collective efforts of the entire community. Don't forget to hit the like and the follow button on the podcast so you'll never miss an episode. To learn more about how to get your case featured on the show or to get instant access to case files and reports, plus documents and many free resources, go over to our Facebook group, Death lies and alibis and join today or you can email us at death lies and alibis at gmail.com as always be safe stay alert and never stop seeking justice